All right, and here we go. As we turn the phone down in <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one. Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast where we introduce you to your future favorite artists today. And being dubbed the 30 for 30 of independent artists, not only do we give you the backstory of what makes these independent artists great, we give you the enduring legacy that's going to make the world and your ears better because you heard their sound. And the young lady on today not only moved my heart with her song, she opened my eyes through a lyric that she said that made me contemplate my own life and love history. Please introduce yourself to the people. So my name is Nika Ladine, who I am an, uh, sing, a singer songwriter out of the DMV. What's up, DC? How you doing? And um, not originally from here, so I can't claim DC is my home. <laughs> but I'm a country girl I'm from Southern Virginia. So Southern Virginia. Southern so Virginia. so are you? Are you? Hmm. Are y'all, are you a UVA family? Are you a Southern Virginia type HBCU family? Like how did your family, yes. oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I grew up um, in the same city, the same, well, it's not a city, it's a town, um, but St. Paul's College, which was um, an HBCU that actually closed down. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it, we gotta we gotta try to preserve our HBCUs, y'all. But um, yeah, my family, you know, everybody that I know, they're like repping, repping, you know, St. Paul's College. You know, I, I got not in my necessarily in my family, actually in my in my family, in um, my generation, I am a, um, I am the first person in my in my lineage to go to college. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't choose an HBCU, so don't fuss at me. <laughs> All good. I did choose an HBCU, but um but yeah i am i am the first person in my in my generation on one side of my family to go to college well salute to you and salute to your Thank family you. because you're still making history and your family's legacy is preserved within you so salute Thank to you. you absolutely i gotta ask you a question first of all i want to confess something to you okay i'm not into r&b music <laughs> i'm gonna tell you why okay because the way i grew up it was foreign. The, the subject matter was very foreign to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So love and people holding hands and kissing and things like that. That's not how I grew up. You see what I'm saying? So for me, when I have hear a person sing and it really moves me, it's a mm -hmm. spiritual, it's a spiritual movement. Oh, wow. How did music move you when you first heard it and got into it? Um, I can remember um, being at my grandparents' house and there was, um, and I don't know why this song just pops in my head, but there was a song by Wilson Pickett and the name of it is 6345789. It's just a bunch of numbers. And he's just, you know, as you, if you can imagine as a, as a kid, as like a four or five year old, you hear numbers. So that automatically, you know, it's like, I know those numbers because you can relate, you're learning numbers. You can relate to that. They were out of order, but you know, um, you know, you just kind of relate to it. So I can remember, um, being this six year old hearing, um, if you need a little love then call on me, mm -hmm. Mm, you know, and it was just that old school vibe. And I can remember watching my grandparents dance in the living room. You know, they danced together. You know, my grandpa, my grandpa would twirl my grandma around. And so I just remember feeling like I, I would always, you say like you, you know, you didn't grow up listening to that with the lovey dovey. I always heard that and I relate, I related it to love because that's what I saw from my grandparents. And then even with my, with my parents, it's like, you know, they, they, they jammed out to, to everything. You know, um, my parents, my parents were the ones who taught me that there's so much emotion in music. I can remember my mom going, you know, going through some of the things that she went through and, and, and listening to certain music. Um, it just evoked this emotion in her. And so 
I learned to um, write from a very emotional standpoint as it relates to my music, um, because that's, I've always kind of um, correlated music and emotion to mean the same thing. Music and emotions. Right. Okay, so then let's talk about music and emotion. Okay. I say this in my interviews and I say this to people who I study with. I say life is the classroom without walls. An experience right. is your best teacher. So my my experience with emotion and music didn't come until I heard soul music and that's the Motown era, mm. right? Okay. So one of my favorite songs of all time is Michael Jackson, Looking Through the Windows, right? Oh, good one. When I listen to that song, it makes me think of every person I've ever met because everybody's eyes have a, a different perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. I remember in elementary school, I used to say something to, uh, and, and I kind of tried to write, like, write it down. I said, um, it's funny that you can see me, but I can't see myself. Mm. We always share our world internally, but if somebody looked internally right here, Mm -hmm. They would see the chapters that develop or have come from our lives because our faces show our story. Yeah. What's one of the musical stories that you heard that made you appreciate the lyrics, not only the melody to a song? Oh, um, one of my, I've said this on an interview before. Um, one of my favorite songs is, um, Actually, there's two I can say, um, you know, I guess probably came out around the time I was born before I was born is uh, Black Butterfly by Denise Williams. Uh, when you really listen to what she's saying in that song, um, it's so encouraging. Um, I, there are times where I, there recently, uh, I've had to stop listening to that song because I didn't feel the lyrics, you know, she's talking about this, you know, she's telling this, this beautiful black woman to, you know, she compares it to a black butterfly, sail across the waters and, and, and tell your sons and daughters what the struggle brings in. It's supposed to be from a place of, I am free. And I hadn't been feeling that. So um, in an effort to get myself to that point where I felt free, um, I started listening to, which is one of my one of my other favorite songs. There's a, it came out in the '90s. It's by Desiree. It's called um, "You Gotta Be." And you know, for anybody who doesn't know how that goes, it's the song that says, um, "You gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser." When you really listen to what she's saying in that song, she says. Listen as your day unfolds. Challenge what the future holds. Try to keep your head up to the sky. Lovers, they may cause you tears. Go ahead, release your fears. Stand up and be counted. Don't be ashamed to cry. You got to be bad. You got to be bold. You got to be wiser. You got to be hard. You got to be tough. You got to be stronger. You got to be cool. You got to be calm. You got to stay together. All I know is love will save the day. So those lyrics, for some reason, it... it it gave me life one day and it was like, dang, like when you really, yeah, I remember listening to that song when I was like, you know, 12, 10, 12, whatever, you know, even younger than that. And I was like, yeah, that's a nice beat, cool. And then you listen to the lyrics one day and it's just like, dang, you, the older you get, the more you kind of resonate with that, you know, it just kind of sinks in. I'm glad you said that because I think in hip hop, people took lyrics for granted. And now that we don't have people that are lyrical, people mm -hmm. miss it mm -hmm. and with and with r&b mainstream i'm talking about you know um r&b r&b is so much soft hip-hop nowadays that we miss the right. 90s storytelling of the song mm -hmm. another song i like in vogue give it up turn it loose yes because that song really tells the tale of what you look for experience and don't let experience beat you down Mm -hmm. Why do you think the story is being lost? And what are we losing without having the story in our R&B music nowadays? So I think that the, the problem is that generations change. So I'll give you an example. Um, I grew up watching 
watching my grandparents and watching my 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 parents and now you know i'm 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 in my my late 30s honestly um yeah uh (laughs) it don't crack it it don't crack (laughs) so um you know now that i'm i'm older it's like i i had those generations in my life in my life and i think when you list when you listen to a lot of the artists, especially the mainstream artists of today, they don't have that generational, you know, they don't have the, the ability to look at the generations because the generations have changed so much, you know? Um, like I said, I remember watching my, you know, watching my grandma and my grandpa dance in the living room. But don't get me wrong, they had their issues, but they they cut a rug, you know, that was what they did. And I think now, um, just, I don't know, just that watching that generational love has been lost. And I, at the same time, I think that, um, a lot of the younger artists now, they don't really understand, um, how deep the music was back then. Like, you know, I don't think, I don't think they understand the depth of it. I remember having a conversation with my cousin. I love my cousin. My cousin's 22 years old. And um, I um, I brought up like this really silly song. And I know you probably remember this song, but it was T-Bird and the B is my baby daddy. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know where it came from one day. And I, it's, we were in the car and we were actually driving back to DC. And I just went, who that is with my baby daddy? And she's, I was like jamming out. And she's like, what? And I'm like, so me, the the song was just so nonsensical. I go, oh, that is T-Bird in the biz. And she's like, who the hell is T-Bird in the biz? And I go, okay, I got to school you. So I put it on in the car. And she's just like, okay. Like, I, I was so confused. So I go, let me, let me tell you where that song originated. So I go to the emotions and I pull up the best of my love. And she's like, Oh, they slowed that joint down. I was like, no, T Bird sped that joint up, you know. So she did. She she doesn't know about the emotion. She doesn't know, you know. And here it is. I'm talking about T Bird in the biz, but you know, she doesn't know about any of that. Um, I it's funny because you know, I I can't say that I don't I don't like hip hop. I've heard a lot of people um ask me. They're like, you know, well, you know, you you're R and B. You're you're r&b singer and i'm like yeah but i listen to chance the rapper like i i listen to and i mean my my the hip-hop that i like is not um as hard um don't get me wrong i have my moments where i you know i just i need to put some dmx on and you know and just go hard um i have been shout out to my brother uh calvin williams i've been in a mood um, I asked him one day, I was like, can I request a song? He he does like, um, the name of his show is Lush Fabs Radio is out of Brooklyn. And um, I was in a, I was in one mood one day and I was like, I want to request the song. And he plays like smooth R&B or, you know, it'll be like soft rock or something like that. I'm like, I want to request a song because this is how I'm feeling. And he goes, what's the song? I don't know. Can I cuss on your show? Mm-hmm. So I go, I want to hear Fuck You by Cameron. <laughs> and he, he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the mood I was in that day. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I I I think um I think that even when it comes to hip hop, the the emotion has been lost. Um everything is about like like you know the mumble rap now that is like, what the hell are they talking about? I don't know what they're talking. There's a commercial. Ludacris did a commercial. I don't know if you've seen it. I just happened to say, I was watching Hulu and Ludacris, Ludacris did a commercial where he's in the studio and he's trying to go hard on the song and he's struggling to go hard on the song. It is a peanut butter commercial and they take a spoonful of Jif peanut butter and stick it in his mouth. And he's just like, uh, so, uh, 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 and like you can barely understand they were like yeah that's gonna be tight right there and it's like no Luda I need move be get out the way I need that Luda I need I need the Luda that's like you know the 
what's your fantasy to see? I need that Luda. I don't want the Luda that I can't understand what he's saying. So I think um, there's something that is uh, being lost. I think everybody wants to, there's such a merge between, even now there's such a merge between hip hop and R&B that you sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two. Um, and I think that just the art, the craft has been lost. So I, I've had people, I, one of the girls that works with my mama, she, I call my mom at work one day and she's like, Hey, you live in DC, right? I'm like, yeah. She's like, when is, and she says some artist name. And I was like, I have no idea who that is. And she was like, no, 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 you know who he is. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't know who he is. She's like, I'm sure you heard of stuff. No, I'm sure I haven't. <laughs> I listen to indie artists. I am an independent artist and I want to support other independent artists. So that's who I listen to. I, I listen to the Night Train 357s and the Hesses um, who used to be um, Path P. And I listen to, you know, those artists because that's who, those are the people that, you know, I, I want to put their names out there. I want to support them. I'll support you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are listening to the wonderful Nicola Dean. You want to know why she's wonderful? Pay attention, stay tuned, make sure you hit that like, put the thumbs up, subscribe, and we're going to get into the next topic, which is emotion. Mm. I want to ask you a question because you're more philosophical in your music than a singer. Mm. I picked up yeah. on that vibe about you. You're very thoughtful, <laughs> not just vocal. See how I did that? That's called listening yeah. to music. <laughs> I want to ask you a philosophical question since you're very thoughtful. Okay. Do, do you think because society has lost the understanding of emotion that that's why our R&B music is so garbage in the mainstream? I think people are still in tune with their emotions. They just don't know how to get it out. Okay. Um, so Hmm, okay. Yeah, I think that I think the emotion is still there. It's just a matter of people not being able to express it, um, you know, in a way that that say they did in, in the old school, you know. Um, you know, I, I think about like some of the I, I was so I'll give you I'll give y'all a, a sneak peek of something that I'm doing. Don't steal my idea. So um, I have the song that I wrote and um it was, it was originally produced by another producer. So um, when I recorded over it, um, I felt, I felt it, it was, it was a late, kind of like a late nineties kind of groove. I'm like, okay. I ended up giving it to another producer. I took the original beat out of it, gave him the, um, the acapella. I was like, Hey, what do you think about this? Just let me know what you think about it when you hear it. So he sends me a message yesterday Wednesday he sends me a message he was like Nika you're a freaking beast like you don't understand like you wrote like you are a freaking genius and I go okay so you want to do a beat to this and he's like yeah I want to do a beat to it I go okay this is what I'm hearing in my head and he's like what's up I'm going in order for me to portray the feeling that I want to I want to get out I wanted to do a come and talk to me baseline that do 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 but I want him to be able to put whatever, have fun with it. I want you to do whatever you want to, but I want that type of baseline to this because when you listen to that song, come and talk to me, I'll be sure wrote that song. I believe, I think I'll be sure wrote come and talk to me. Um, I think he did anyway. Don't, don't quote me on that. But when you listen to that song, he, when Casey is singing that song, there is no question about what he's thinking. He and he, not one time did he say like, "I wanna, I wanna smash. I'm ready to bend you over. I'm gonna smack you know, None of that. His thing is, I've been watching you for so very long, trying to get my nerve, my nerve build up to be so strong. You don't have to question what's going. That man is like, I've been, girl. I see you. You're like I'm feeling you. You know what I'm saying? I think that nowadays it's like. Girl, I see you and I'm feeling you, but when I get you, I'm a, I'm a, ooh, it's all, you know, like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's the emotion has, has been taken out of it. And so I think a lot of times the emotion is still there, but 
everything is so forward now. Nothing is, nothing is, 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 um, kept under wraps. Nothing is kept under wraps. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Isley brothers, whew, they had some stuff. If you listen to that between the sheets album, they were saying some stuff, but not one time did they say like, I'm going to, you know, do some, they were just like, Hey, we're making love between the sheets. You know what they were doing, but they didn't, they didn't go into body parts. As a fact. <laughs> <laughs> But see, that, that, that's what I mean when, when I, because emotions are thoughts as well as some spiritual because you can feel an emotion. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember when I was a little boy, all right, anybody who knows, watches Heritage Hip Hop knows this. Let me tell you, when I was a little boy, I used to get crushes on people who could sing because it's mm. like they touched a part of my soul or spirit that nobody could ever touch. Because like mm -hmm. I said, I didn't grow up with a, um, a background in R&B. My parents didn't play music in the house. So mm -hmm. that, that was something that opened me up. I remember the first time I heard Lisa Fisher, How Can I Ease the Pain? Mm. I fell in love with Lisa Fisher. Like when that video came <laughs> on, everybody had to leave the room. I was watching Lisa Fisher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and, and, and people who can sing to that degree has always, I always get the same feeling. Because I feel when a woman sings her heart out, mm -hmm that's where she finds her freedom because nobody's bottling her emotion mm -hmm. and her and she's naturally showing her god power to the world right when did you first feel your god power and how did it change you oh okay um so i'm in the studio and this is this is this is gonna sound crazy because this wasn't too long ago. I've been singing since I was eleven. Um, I'm in the I'm in the studio and I um, I'm recording energy. I had already um, let me take that back. I had already recorded energy, and um, I was I had written this song. It's called the breakup song, and I wrote this song and. As I'm in the studio and I'm singing it, I didn't, I didn't have any of my lyrics memorized. So I have my phone like in my face. So I'm trying to like read and sing into the mic at the same time. So I'm like literally like this, just going through. And at one point it was kind of like, okay, well, I've got the third verse memorized because I've had to re you know, record it like so many times. So I put the phone down. And for some reason, my mind went back, because the name of the song is the breakup song. I went, my mind went back to when I um, separated from my ex-husband and those emotions that I felt. And um, I started singing. And at the end of the song, I did this. It's like I had a, like this breakdown. And I just kind of let the feeling come out. And I start ad-libbing. And I kind of look up. And I am crying, like I am like crying, I, like snotting up crying. And I look over at the engineer and he's looking at me. He goes, that was good. And I go, no, like I was crying. And, you know, I literally like, it was like, I think I, like when I go back and I listen to it, I'm like, you can just hear me going, um, I don't want to do this no more. Hell. Like I'm just kind of just going in and I look up and he's just like, yeah, that was, that was good. And that was the first time I felt the, like a release of sorts. And that's the first time it's ever happened in the studio. I mean, you know, it happens in church, you know, you're in church and you feel a little happy, you know what I'm saying? But that's the first time um, I felt like I had to get that out. Like that was the God. Um, I think about, you said Lisa Fisher. I can sing that. I can, that song, you know, all alone on my knees I pray. So, you know, she's like got these highs and lows of this song. And you can just feel, because you can feel the highs and the lows of the song, you know exactly what she's feeling. 
But when she hits that high note at the end that I ain't going to try to do right now, (laughs) when she hits that high note, I don't know if anybody knows why Lisa Fisher wrote that song. Does any, are, are you familiar with that? So Lisa Fisher um, was a backup singer for Luther Vandross. And there was another guy who was backup singer for Luther Vandross named Keith, Kevin Owens, Keith Owens, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens was his name. Um, I think his name was Kevin Owens. And Lisa Fisher and Kevin Owens were having an affair with each other. Kevin Owens was married. And... This is the uh, my understanding of, of the situation. Like, this is this is just what I was told. But yeah, she was having an affair with him and she wrote that song. When you listen to the lyrics of that song, it makes sense. You know, all alone on my knees, I pray for the strength to stay away. You know, nobody wants to be in love with a married man. That shit sucks. <laughs> like I, I talk like I'm talking from experience and I can't confirm or deny if I am or not but <laughs> but I can say that I could understand that emotion that she put into that song and yeah there was a that was that was straight from a spiritual level and see we, go back, we see we go back to the spirit of things because I believe hip-hop is not rap music. I don't even believe hip hop is boom bap, trap and all that. I believe hip hop is the expression of God through us in which we take shape in our celebration. And I just call right. it hip hop because that's what we call it top nowadays. You know what I'm saying? If it was back in the day, mm-hmm. we probably called it bebop or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the one universal truth about R&B is either you can sing or you can't. <laughs> if you can't sing, I'm not listening to that shit. Are you kidding me? I don't even want to hurt my ears with that. I've had I've had people that I've been cool with sing on songs. And I've had people that I heard their voice crack. And I had people in my car and like, stop, what, what was that? I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? I, I know the feeling. But I also <laughs> know the feeling of hearing somebody sing and your soul opens up. Mm-hmm. That's a feeling I can never explain. Like, like, let me let me give you another instance. Um, did you see the Aretha Franklin movie? Mm, no, I haven't seen it yet. There's a scene where Jennifer Hudson is singing, and one of the girls who plays Aretha Franklin's sister just does a vocal. Everybody in the movie theater cried at the same time. Oh wow! And I just looked like, oh snap! Like, I've never seen that emotion before until that one part because she just sung and I, I'm telling you everybody on my left was just and I was like <laughs> you gotta be kidding and everybody on my right was like it was just, I was like oh like that's the power of a voice mm-hmm. it's written in the bible that God said that it says of God that his voice has power and meaning his voice is like the rain that when the rain goes it does its job and it does not come back for whatever it's mm-hmm. set out to do, it gets done and that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's how I think we take our voices for granted because whatever mm-hmm. you do with your voice, it's meaningful, it's powerful, and it has purpose. I want to ask you about the song Energy because like I said, there's certain things, there's certain instances where a song can just break me. Anita Baker, Rapture, Classic. That's the <laughs> album that broke Sade. Anything, anything, <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be vocalist. Look at Janet Jackson; she has great music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got SWV. You know, I'm putting you in that lineage, though. Oh well, oh wow! Oh, you never heard that before? Ooh, um, no, listen to me. A, I think compared to like Janet Jackson, I've heard people say like, "Oh, this song reminds me of of Sade," but no, to to be um, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the fact that I got a song that's being played internationally. So it's for you to put me in that lineage or in that legacy that is, um, who it's, it's, it's a lot. It's up, it's, <laughs> it's it's up, it's up to you to nurture because one song doesn't do it for me. See, that's the thing though, mm-hmm. because one song Makes you makes you turn your head like okay, then I have to see the track work, and that's why I say I could put you in that lineage because as a writer, R and B is not only something that you hear; it's something that you feel. Mm-hmm. 
Tell me about the power of deja vu, because that kind of came out in energy. And I, I want to know how that, how that, how that, um, how that connected to you. So, um, the lyric, the lyric that I say in energy is, uh, deja vu, tell me, have we met somewhere before? Um, I'll kind of, I'll kind of give you the story. So the person that I'm referring to in that song is my, is my twin flame. Um, and anybody, if anybody is familiar with Twin Flames, it is a part, it's, it's a person who is the split image of your soul. Um, so I'm at work one night and, um, well, actually I was at work this particular week and I had had just a, a week from hell. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna go home I'm going to get a bottle of wine. I'm going to mellow out. I'm going to take a bubble bath. I don't want to be bothered. I'm not going to answer my phone, nothing. And this girl from my job, she goes, <laughs> she's a white girl. She goes, oh my God, there's like this party tonight. And oh my God, Nika, you should like totally come. And I go, I'm good. Like, I just want to go get my wine. I'm good. She's like, no, no, no. Like for real. And I'm like, okay. She's like, it's the judge's party and it costs like like, I think she's like 40 bucks or 50 bucks to get in. And I was like, oh, hell no. I know I ain't paying no 40, 50 bucks to get in no party. And she's like, oh my God, if I can get you a ticket for free, like, will you come? I love you, Rachel. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's how she talks. She's like, oh my God, like, if I can get you a ticket, will you come? I'm like, yeah. So about an hour later, she comes back. She's like, I found you a ticket. Oh my God. I'm like, okay. So I get to this party and, um, all of my, I'm, I'll get to this party and it's a judge's party because I work for the court. So I'm thinking the judges are going to be wallflower. You know, they're just going to be holding up the walls and my coworkers are going to be on the dance floor with me and they got drinks and it's, you know, I'm thinking all this stuff. And I get to the party, all the judges are on the dance floor just getting it. I mean, boom, boom. And all of my coworkers are on the wall like, I ain't going out there to dance. And I'm like, okay, that ain't me. If I go to a party, I'm going to dance. So I get out on the dance floor and it's me and some of the directors at work and some of the judges and I'm out there dancing with, the, with these judges. And I look over in the, in the corner um, of the room and there's this guy and he's just dancing by himself. He's just dancing by himself. And I'm like, I look at him, I know visually i have never seen him before but i knew him and i could not understand how is it that i know him like i know him and i don't know why but i walk over to him he's a stranger he don't know me i don't know him i just walk over to him and i start dancing with him and he danced with me back and we danced the whole night, just danced. And at the end of the night, I just asked him what his name was. He told me his name. And um, for some reason, it was like, I got home and I, in my mind, I was like, I kept trying to figure out how do I know him? I have never seen him before. I know that I have never seen him before. How do I know him? So the following week, I get back to work. I run it. Of all the times I run into him in the hallway, I have never seen him before, but just, you know, after the, the party, I run into him in the hallway. And he and I are having a conversation and he's like, yeah, you know, so where, where do you live? And I give him like this roundabout area of where I live. And he goes, oh, okay, yeah, I know where that is. I live in that city too. Like at the time I lived in a city, city called Silver Spring. Yeah, I live in Silver Spring too. I'm like, okay, well, it's not really Silver Spring. I live closer to like Laurel area. Oh man, I live closer to like Laurel area too. And I'm like, okay, well, I live off of this street and he kind of stops and he goes, I live off of this street. And I'm like, really? And he says, yeah. And come to find out we had never seen each other before but we live directly across the street from one another. Directly across the street <laughs> from one another. Um, we, it was two different apartment complexes, but we had, we had never seen each other. And 
he became my best friend. He became like, we were like this. He was, he was, he was my best friend. Um, but something that I've learned is that a twin flame is not always meant to come into your life to be a romantic partner. Sometimes, uh, most of the time, a twin flame comes into your life to teach you more about yourself than you thought you knew. Um, and so that um, that is kind of where our relationship, as, as far as, you know, well, the relationship came to a halt because it was kind of like, you shown me who I am. And I can honestly say he, he, I showed him who he was and he showed me who I was. But now comes the, the inner work, the inner working. So I say that to say, when I say deja vu, I mean like, you know that you know that you know, but you, but you don't know how you know, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It makes a it's lot of sense. It's almost like you're experience a, a experiencing mm -hmm. something that happened mm -hmm. like a few lifetimes ago. Hey, we going deep. I told y'all this is a phenomenal singer right <laughs> now. Make sure you hitting that like button. Make sure you subscribing and stay tuned to Heritage Hip Hop. I want to ask you a musical question that I think people take for granted with R&B. <clears throat> okay. See, with hip hop, people rhyming, and you got to rhyme to the beat and have flow and delivery, right? Mm -hmm. R&B is similar but harder. That's what I think. I think hip hop's harder than R&B because you're more wordy. But as far as delivery and performance, R&B could be harder because you have to hit the runs, you got to hit the notes, you got to do a lot that comes with um stretching your vocals out. You see know what I'm saying? Yes. How do you pick the right music so it brings the best out of your voice or that you highlight the music to your voice? Um, I know my style. I know my personal style. I like, it's funny because um, the song, I'll give you an example of the song Image This Moment. I heard the beat, I liked the beat, and I was like, this ain't even my style. Like, this is more of a trap kind of kind of beat. And the producer um, who gave it to me, he was like, you, you can do this, you can do this. And I'm like, I don't know what to write to this beat. Like, you just gave me this beat. I don't know what to write. And I had think I had this beat for like a few weeks and I kept listening to it. I listened to it in the car. I'm like, I don't know what to write to this beat. And um, one day, going through depression i'm having one of my bouts and um i'm sitting here and i'm watching one one of the things that i like to do when i'm like not feeling great um uh, i watch cartoons so i start watching yeah like cartoons you gotta watch cartoons right so i start watching the emperor's new school which was a cartoon that came on in my 20s like <laughs> but i still watched it right so I turn on the Emperor's New School and I'm like, you know what? There's a camera. If you listen to Image This Moment, that's the reason why the name of the song is Image This Moment. It's because there's a camera flicker in the background. It's that cute, cute. It's like a, somebody's taking a picture. So I'm like, you know what? If I was my alter ego right now, what would my alter ego write about? And I'm thinking, camera flicker, what would I write about? And then I'm watching this cartoon and Cusco is going, hey, spell my name again. It's all about me. And I'm like, but what the hell would Cusco write about right now? <laughs> so so um, I just, I started just flowing from what Cusco would write about. And if I was my alter ego, what, what, what would I write about? So I start really just bragging on myself. I felt nothing that I was writing. At the time, I didn't feel any of that. I, if you listen to Image This Moment, I, it's, I am going in. And then at one point I got to a, I had writer's block and I was just like, you know what? I need something to write right here. And I wrote, um, I'm not cocky, but I am forever grateful. Got a drum beat that only I can march to. Those don't rhyme, but it fit. And it's like, for me, it, it, I needed to express that in that song. But sometimes it's not about, it's just about what you're feeling in that moment. Like I said, I write from a very, a very emotional um, standpoint. All of my music stems from something that I'm feeling it at the time. I don't know, I don't really know how to, 
I, I was challenged by, um, shout out to Calvin again. Calvin's produced my, uh, my next single, but uh, I, I told him, I was like, I, I write about emotions. Like everything I write about, it comes from an emotional standpoint. And he's just like, why don't you try to write about something that, that's, you know, that's a challenge for you. Why don't you try to write about something that's not emotional? I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, I kind of like, <laughs> I like what I'm doing. Like, I just need to figure out how to get my emotions to a different place. So. I'm scared of you. You scared of me? Yep. Why you say that? <laughs> because, because think about it. You know you and you're finding out who you are. Then you could come mm -hmm. outside of yourself to write something that's not you. Mm -hmm. That's a dynamic that most people don't have because either people mm -hmm. give you the BS or the fake stuff and don't touch any of their life or people are so into their life that they block the world out. Mm. So imagine this. Okay, remember Die Without You, PM Dawn? Mm. All right, so, so check this out. Imagine if you wrote that song. Mm -hmm. You are telling me you could write that song from a place that you're not in, but you could still capture the moment of a person who's in that place. Right. That's a gift. I wrote, um, when, when I wrote about um, the breakup song, I wasn't going through a breakup when I wrote that song. I knew somebody else who was going through a breakup when they wrote that song. And I just took myself back to a time when I was going through it and I knew how that felt. And so I wrote about it. Not what I mean though, cause okay. pain is universal, right? Right. Everybody has pain. This is why I don't listen to R&B music for most time because as other people's pain, either I don't care about or I don't relate to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, hip hop, I could relate to because that's the person that nobody listens to finally getting to say something. Mm -hmm. That's how I grew up. So when my friends, like I have friends who are R&B aficionados. You ask him mm -hmm. anything about R&B, he'll tell you something that your grandmother's mother used to listen to because that's his <laughs> style. He likes music like that, right? So put, put me with him. Let me know who he is because I, I, yeah. All right. Nasif, Big A. <laughs> Nicola Dean, <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> check her out. She's dope. So, um, like, 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 getting back to what I was saying, it's like in hip hop when we listen to people talk, the pain is so universal that you feel it. Think mm -hmm. about Styles P and Akon locked up. You know how I many people mm -hmm. been in jail? <laughs> you know what I'm or how many people? Or how many people have experienced something that where they're detained and they can't do anything? PM doing die without you is not universal, but to the people who feel it, they know it. Uh -huh. To be able to sing a song that not everybody can feel, but they can know it, that's a gift. Uh -huh. that's, that's called being an MC. Because uh -huh. you're rapping about other people's lives to them, where you're not uh -huh. talking about your life to them. Uh -huh. And then they're going to relate to you through their own experience. Mm -hmm. This is why I think R&B is so lame. All you out there that sing that bullshit that's out right now is because you're talking about getting bags and making having sex and all this other stuff, but we're not understanding the you that goes to that journey. You see what I mean? Mika, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be real with you, all right? So when I first heard Energy, right? I was like, mm -hmm. yo, her voice. <laughs> nah because you know i think you and i were friends before that right weren't we friends on facebook before the song were we friends on facebook before the song nah, came out no nah. okay i don't know why i was thinking that no nah, when i heard when i heard the song i found you out okay because i was like nah this this is different you know what i'm saying like it's like i'm professing like artist crush right now so pardon me oh. <laughs> so when i heard when i heard your voice right it was just like nah something's different because i have a friend who sings and when she sings it sounds like she's giving birth on everything it's oh. like a life-changing song shout out to gail campbell that's my peoples <laughs> when i heard when i heard you it was like sit down and relax because this is the rest that you wanted. Those are spiritual life changing things. Uh -huh. 
So when I heard energy, the the hook, you know what I'm saying? That was like the that was like the door opening to a room in your house that you don't go into too much. <laughs> so it was okay. like it was like, damn, there's a space here that needs to be occupied. Hmm. And when I heard the song, I'm like, I gotta put that on a playlist because that one right there, that's something different about that. Hmm. Then I um saw the live that you did with the people that you sung with, your band or something. No, and yeah, I was, when I uh, it was with uh, me and uh, uh, R. Dot Relic. Right. Yeah. And then I heard Jaw Dynamic, and I was like, Nah, 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 nah. That's not it. That's not it, because. You remember in the five heartbeats when they said about Duck, he would write until he he'll be a he won't be a better writer until he feels more. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until he got his heart broke that he really started to write. Mm-hmm. I felt, and I could be wrong. I felt that when you sing, you're letting something go that you're afraid to let loose. So then, oh it, God! I <laughs> so then, when it comes out. You freeing yourself, but not everybody's noticing you, and that may make you uneasy. Is that a I fact? Can't. Ooh, okay. That, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it's funny. My mom would hear me sing in church, and my mom would be like, um, I I remember my mom hearing me sing at church, and she told me one day, she says, Your voice is beautiful, but I feel like something is missing and I was like well what's missing and she says it's almost like you're afraid to give it your all like you're just afraid to give it your all and I would always say yeah because I'm singing a a Yolanda Adams song and you want me to sound like Yolanda Adams and I can't do those runs and all of that and she's like no 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 that's not it um I don't profess to be able to do all of that fancy, you know, and I am telling you, I'm not going to do all of that. I like, that's just not who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, So what you get, as a matter of fact, I was having this conversation with somebody um, the other night. Um, When it came to energy, (laughs) I had recorded energy probably, I think we we were on like the 19th take of energy. And um, I went into the studio to record a whole different song. And the producer for Energy, um, I hear him come through the door. He had already told me, he's like, I'm coming to the studio, but I'm gonna be late. I'm like, okay. And then I hear him come to, through the door. And then I hear this woman's voice and I hear her going, oh my God, hey, I'm like, who the heck is that coming into the studio? So I turn around, I look, and it's my vocal coach. And I'm like, <sighs> You know, we did the whole scream and hug, you know, the woman thing or whatever. And so she's like, all right, all right, let me hear this first single. You know, let's let's go ahead. And we turn it on. And she's like, listen, she's like, you know, going through it. Song goes off. She goes, okay. I was like, what's up? She goes, who is that singing? I was like, that's me. I'm like, proud. That's, that's me. What you talking about? She's like, nah. She looks at the engineer. She looks at um, AJ, the producer. She goes, I know her voice. That's not, that's not the person that I know from vocals. She's like, that's not her. She's like, we're going to keep the hook. We're going to do all the verses all over again, right? And we're going to do all the verses and the bridge all over again. And she says, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to visualize who you're singing to and I want you to smile the whole time. And that's the take that you all hear streaming. And I learned that the reason why you weren't getting the emotion that I knew I could give is because I didn't know how to close my eyes and put my put myself into that place. I was just writing lyrics. That's how I felt. And I was singing the lyrics that I felt, but I didn't know how to really feel what I was singing while I was singing it. Um, I say all of that to say, do I 
have a fear it's almost like I know what you're talking about I, I know exactly what you're saying do I step out and then I'm kind of like okay yeah I've done enough absolutely <laughs> that I I'm like I feel like this man just this man's killing me softly within his in his best Roberta Flack right now um not the Lord not Lauren Hill but Roberta Flack <laughs> I gotta take it back 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 um but it's like you're singing my song um I'm still learning how to, I don't, I, I never want to be a, a, um, a Jennifer Hudson. I never want to be, I mean, and not to say there's anything wrong with that. I just, that's not who I am. I'm not a Fantasia. I'm not a, a Christina Aguilera. I don't, I don't want to just, you know, throw notes at you and all of that and do the, screaming and all of that. I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, I want you to get the softness of me because that's who I am in real life. You know, that's, that's really who I am. I'm not gonna, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm loud and crazy, but you know, I'm, I want to make sure that, that people get that softness. I, that's, that's yeah. Like, I don't, I don't really know how else to, to go into that, but I, all like I want to give you soft but I don't want to give you scared like it's funny I gotta um, I'm putting the song on my album um name of the song is uh forehead kisses so <laughs> shout out to new choice yes <laughs> case face went like what so <laughs> so I got this song that's gonna be on the album I don't know if it's gonna be a single or not I'm gonna let everybody else choose whatever single they want to come off the album outside of E4L is the next single and then after that we'll just decide you know fans whoever listeners will decide there's a song on my on my album it's called forehead kisses um again I got the beat and I heard the beat same same producer or, or the original beat came from the same producers, same producer from Image This Moment. And I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, okay, it could be a hip hop song, but I don't know, I don't know what to do with it. So he's like, just, you know, you, you got this. I got full faith in you, just write to it. And I was like, okay, when I hear this song, it's a, it's a straight up like, for lack of a better word, it's, it's an effing song. Like, it ain't like a, it ain't like a smooth, it's an effing song. So what am I supposed to write to this? So I write whatever I think sound, would sound good. And I go to the studio and I'm, re I'm recording and I'm, this is what I wrote. And he just, <laughs> he starts laughing. He goes, dude, how old are you again? <laughs> and I start to, I'm like, I'm in my thirties. And he goes, and that's, that's so bubblegum. Like, that's what you came up with. And I was like, yeah, he goes, how far are you willing to go? And I was like, as far as, and he was like, hey, look, I know your mama's a minister. I know you sang in the church and all. He was like, all of that aside, how far are you willing to go? I'm like, all right, come home. And what comes out was, it always starts out with your forehead kisses. Then you put your lips on my, you touch me and some shivers down my spine. The best addiction doctors can prescribe. It starts out with your forehead kisses. Next thing you know, your tongue's between my thighs. Focus on me and look me in my eyes. Your face right now is just like, what the hell? But <laughs> I needed to get that out in that moment. And I go back into the studio and we were working on a totally different song. I was like, yo, put that song on that beat that you did. We did one take. I did all the background stuff, all the harmonies. And he just looks at me. He goes, we ain't even got to record the song no more. Like you did everything this one take. Yeah. Um, my, anybody who knows me well enough knows that my entire production team just kind of just imploded. So I, already had the lyrics to the song i go to this new this other producer he's not a new well he's my new producer a new producer to me his name is new choice so shout out to new choice and i go hey i need you to to what do you think about this song and he he had it for like a month and a half and he's like 
I don't know, nigga, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, have you listened to it? He was like, no, nah, I don't know. I'm like, okay, just listen to the song. He sends me a text message on a, I think it was a Saturday. He says, it was like a Saturday like afternoon. He's like, I heard that song. He was like, when I say I'm in like a mood for creating, like I am going to do my best to make a beat to this song and you just let me know what you find out. He's like, it might take me a few days, but I'm in a mood to create. I'm like, okay, at two o'clock in the morning, like, so less than 12 hours later, he's emailing me. He's like, I created like a whole ass beat to this song because I can't stop thinking about this song. And it took the song from just a straight up boning song to this quiet storm love making song. And it's amazing how a beat can transition something like that. And so, yeah, like that's, that's what you get is that, that, you know, I want people to see many facets of me. I'm not just a sweetheart that can sing about, ooh. I, a, I can be on my grown woman too. I am not, I, I want to be, I mean, and, and I shouldn't say I want to be, I am. Um, I'm the girl next door. I want people to have that because that's who I am. I want you to get that feel of me, but the girl next door is multifaceted. So I want people to understand that I am a multifaceted um, artist. So let's get to know the multifaceted artist named Nicola Dean. Please give everybody your social media on how to get your music. So I am only on Instagram right now. <laughs> um, and I, you can find me on Instagram at Nicola Dean. Um, if you want to contact me, you can contact me on my Instagram at Nicola Dean or um my email right now, that is the Nicoladine at gmail.com. Um, you can find my music on all streaming platforms, or you can go to my band camp, which is uh, Nicoladine.bandcamp.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I did not stream her song. I purchased the song when I heard it. She got yes, my he money did. Immediately. And let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I do not believe in streaming music. I really don't. Um, I believe streaming is for marketing and that's the new slavery. Sorry, okay. you're, giving, you're giving support to the third party and not to the artist. So okay. if you have any music that you like or you love and you stream it, please purchase it because that's the power that you give the artist. You're showing them that you want them to create more and you're giving them the financial fiscal means to get better sounds, better equipment or whatever to give you the music that you want. And if you want them to have a good lifestyle to give you that great music that you want, please come out your pocket and purchase because guess what? Some of y'all be buying lottery tickets that you're not going on anyway. Get a song. And cigarettes that make you sick. Exactly. And it's $10 a pack <laughs> now and I don't even smoke and I know. So all I'm telling you <laughs> is do what you got to do to buy the music. Don't be a fake supporter who says I like your music and then you don't give support. Shout out to my stepdaughter in the back. She's beautiful. Hi, beautiful stepdaughter. She said, you're beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> College graduate, nursing school. Salute. Yes. All right. You got a hand clap. <laughs> 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 All right. So with that being said, we've come to the end of the interview. That's the first part, though. Time for the second part. You ready to party with me? Yes. <laughs> All right. So. The second part of the interview is called the rapid fire questions. These are not yes, no questions. These are questions designed to show your depth of the knowledge of your craft, the, our culture, and what you do as a person. Okay. For you, you have different questions though, <laughs> because you bring out something different in the questions and in the interview. Today, we're okay. going to play, you're going to play yin yang, and then you get your question. Oh. oh, okay. So here's the first question. Sun or moon? Ooh. My uh, son. Okay, so the sun is a radiating power that gives life through its essence and through its radiation. Mm -hmm. So when it shines on you, it brings the best out of you. Mm. Rapid fire question. What artist brings the best out of you so that you can shine when you do your craft? Jan Jackson. Very quick. <laughs> All right. Joy or pain? Joy. Pain is universal. Joy is relative. Mm -hmm. And people make great music out of pain and we don't hear about the joy. Question, if we made more music out of joy, would our music be better since love is more powerful than pain and death? 
Um, I think that even the music that comes from pain comes from a source of love. Um, we may not we may not see it that way, but um, yeah, I just I think that even even pain is a even pain comes from love. Obviously, you loved it in order for it to cause you so much hurt if for it for to hurt. So yeah, like I think it's it's just a matter of, of perspective. Television or movies? Depends. <laughs> Old school movies, five heartbeats, uh color purple, uh, like so movies? Rain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, movies. What's the best movie soundtrack you heard? And if you had a song on it, what song would you bring to the table? Oh, um, uh, best movie soundtrack I've heard. Actually, um, it was it was probably Boomerang. It's crazy that I just said Boomerang, and the song was um, Johnny Gill. There you go. That's my favorite <laughs> song on that soundtrack. That's yes. my favorite Other than song PM on that soundtrack. Die without you, nah, Other than PM Johnny die Gill. That's song on that sound. <laughs> That's my that's my favorite Johnny Gill song ever. Mm. I'll be connected. That's what's up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you could put a song of yours on there, how would you bring it to the table? What what song would you want to contribute to that soundtrack? Um, it would as a, believe it or not, I would it would be energy. Um, mm. that's the, like when you if you watch that movie, I don't know some of you young folk, you might not have seen Boomerang, but Boomerang. Ooh, okay so he was feeling her energy but he was feeling so many other women's energies before her and then he fell in love with her and then all of a sudden she was just kind of like I'm gonna play you just like play all of these other women and so I think it was that is a classic example of um the player getting played um but he was it, it showed a vulnerability of, of the main character, Marcus, whose name was Marcus. So, <laughs> Marcus, yep. darling. Mm -hmm. So, um, it showed him his vulnerable side because the whole time you're feeling like this dude is a dog, but he he's a, um, Eddie Murphy's character is really vulnerable. And when you listen to my song, Energy, it's, it's speaking about a vulnerability so yeah energy would definitely be a song that i'll put on that on that soundtrack so energy is a classic that's what you're telling me i, I mean it has the potential to be i'm not like, I, mm -hmm. i'm scared <laughs> i have to manifest it no i have to manifest it. yes energy is a classic nika energy is a classic yes it is no, I'm telling you. Yes, it is. It's a classic. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's continue. I got a couple more questions. Okay. Um, this is a great interview. Thank you very much for it. Um, Thank you. We're going to go back to the yin yang, though. Um, this is a hard one. Let me say that for later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since you brought it up, cartoon or reality? Cartoon. Okay. Some of the best cartoons that we watch as children were ones that we saw ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Every boy wanted to be Batman, Spider-Man, or one of the X-Men. The young ladies that I know that watch cartoons didn't want to be the princess. They wanted mm -hmm. to be the girl from Pirates of Dark Water, <laughs> ironically. Or mm -hmm. they, they wanted to be Sailor Moon, anime. Mm -hmm. If you could sum your life up, or your career so far as a cartoon, what would be the name of your cartoon? And who would you, who would your character be if not just following the singing path in the story? Oh, so the name of my cartoon would be, um, I don't know. Um, um, uh i don't know i'm like looking i'm looking for um it would be purpose and sacrifice that would be mm. the name of of the cartoon which is i don't know that's just weird um no it's not and i i would say that i would relate more closely to 
to gadget on Chippendale Rescue Rangers. That's one of my that's one of my favorite cartoons. Wow, gadget. Yeah. Gadget on Chippendale Rescue Rangers. The go-to person who will always have your back and put give you something to help you in every situation. Yep. <laughs> she was the, she was always the the brains of the operation. She was always the fixer. So as a person, you're telling me you're not emotionally dependent. You're emotionally nurturing. Yes, very much so. And you can pick that up with her energy on the single energy out right now. Make sure y'all <laughs> get that because Nika is dope. Nika is dope. <laughs> Let me give you like three more questions and then we're going to get out of here. Side okay. note question. How did you like being on Heritage Hip Hop or would you recommend this to any independent artist? I would definitely recommend this to everybody. And yes, I love being, I, I've been excited about this. I think our last, the last time I was supposed to be speaking with you, I don't know what happened. Um, something fell through and I was like, Kay, I, I can't do it right now. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm sorry, Kay, but um, no, I've been, I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this. So have I. Yeah. Yay. Well, last three questions. Let's go out with a bang. Um, I asked this as a hip hop question, so I'm going to ask this to you in the form. Okay. What song or album perfectly describes you from another artist catalog? Brandy, Never Say Never. That's authentic. The, the album. Why? 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 That's authentic. Why? Um, she kind of singing my story. Mm. Um, you know, she's got like the the title song is "Never Say Never," and it's like, um, who would have ever thought a guy would want a girl like me? Who ever thought that I would fall so easily? Who ever thought to Whoever thought that we would ever come to be, I guess they just don't know how much you mean to me. Like it's, I imagine this place that I'm in right now and I never thought I would be here. Mm. Like if you had had a conversation with me a, a year and a half, two years ago about me doing this interview with you, I was like, hey, what? <laughs> if you had told me I would have had a single out on the streaming on you know multiple platforms I would have been like okay yeah you're joking um but you know I I can feel every single word of that song of that of that album um she's got the song um almost doesn't count almost doesn't count is actually on there um i'm just trying to be me doing what i got to some people think that i'm just sitting on top of the world i can relate to that song in so many different ways like nobody I'll, i'm gonna say this for the record k and i talk that's my brother that's my that's my boy so k knows some of the things that i've been through so for people to see me and they're like, oh, you know, you're so beautiful and you're so talented and you're so this. I'm like, do you understand life is, life ain't always beautiful. Life ain't always beautiful. Like life, life, life is a struggle. It, it is a, it, it, sometimes for me, it is an uphill climb. So when people say I'm sitting on top of the world, it's like, yeah, I, everybody else sees me on top of the world, but they don't understand that the climb to get there was a complete BI, you know? Yes, I understand that. Believe. So, you know, I, I can, I can definitely relate to that album. All right. See depth. That's what we all about in heritage hip hop. Last two questions. I'm going to ask you a, a off cuff question because it's not, don't take it at surface value. Really, really look into my okay. question, okay? Okay. What's the difference between gospel music and R&B, soul R&B, besides the topic? There, it's the, it's the same thing. It all, it, it all talks about love. Um I used this as an example one time. 
there's a song by Glenn Jones that came up back in the 80s. And it says, um, I've been searching for so long. Nobody like you, nowhere to be found. Makes me wonder what I do if I never had someone like you. Yeah. Okay. What is who is he talking to? Is he talking to God or is he talking to a woman? Because when you listen to the lyrics, it could be interchangeable. I can say, God, I've been searching for so long. Nobody like you, nowhere to be found. And I could be talking to a man. Makes me wonder what I do if I never had someone like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's interchangeable. Who is he talking to? We play it as an R&B song because when you get further into the song, he's like, you were the best, the best thing, baby, to ever come. But what if he said, you were the best, the best thing, Jesus, to ever come into my life? It's, it's interchangeable. Um, I think that's what, that's, the only, the only difference, people put the same amount of energy and effort into R&B as they do gospel. It's just the words. Who are you mm. singing to? I can, I can interchange mm. the words to, to pretty much most, most R&B songs, unless they're really talking about like sex, and then it's just kind of like, okay, yeah, that's just weird. But, you yeah. know, yeah. We can, I said, come and talk to me by Jodeci. Come and talk to me. I really want to meet you. Can I talk to you? I really want to know you. I could be talking to God. That's very interesting because with me, people have asked me, like, I like, I like, I love, I love the most high. Study the Bible, Quran, Torah, Absolutely. whatever. Love the most mm -hmm. high. Because that's something that's um in here that has to be unlocked. And it's your personal journey to unlock it. Nobody can give it to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Know? And when I hear the gospel music, I get turned off so fast and the reason mm -hmm. why is because the music is repetitious that's it mm -hmm. i just don't like the beats but i mm -hmm. think the subject matter is i think the subject matter is 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 is, is dope like like when i listen to like, i've heard for i don't know how many days now never would have made it mm. great song i got the victory alana adams great mm -hmm. song i'm not into kurt franklin but smile whatever that song is Mm -hmm. I love the lyrics. I don't like the music. Oh. And then with R&B, sometimes I like the music, but I don't like their lyrics. Oh. So it's like, I want to marry the two, but then it's like weird. You know, I mean, you know, in hip hop is the same way now. You sometimes like the lyrics, but the beats are so garbage that you don't want to be you want to deal with it. And then the beats could be hot and then people are mumbling. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you have to, that's the beauty of independent artistry is that, Everybody complains about the music that's out, not understanding that there's music that's there that's so good. You just got to go get it. Right. And one thing there's I a, say, oh, I'm sorry. Go there's ahead. a song. There's a song. Um, I listened to this. This I used to listen to this station called Neo Soul Cafe. Um, I think she's out of New York. Yeah, I used to listen to the station and she used to play the song. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening. It, the song used to come up because I used to, I used to just like, you know, put it on my phone and stream it through my A-L-E-X-A. -E I can't say her name because she answers every single time, right? So um, I used to, um, you know, just have it Bluetooth through my, from my phone. And one day the song comes on and it's by this artist. Her name is Re Renee Dion. And I never really paid attention to what she was saying because every time I heard it, I was like, man, that is like the beat just goes I'm thinking yeah that's a bad R&B song right there you know it, it's just, just but one day I sat back and I really listened to what she was having to say in that song and she she's like I'm talking about my exodus my wilderness experience and I'm like hmm? and then she says the hook comes on and she's like, I need a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. And I was like, why does that sound like some Paul wrote? I mean, um, David wrote. So I'm like, go to my, go to my phone, pick up my phone. 
who wrote need a lamp to my feet a light on my path on my path and it was like yeah that's a song oh, okay well david did write that and i'm like dang this whole time i was like jamming thinking listen to the beat thinking that's like a smooth r&b song and it's a it's a it's a, it's a gospel song um i think that um we we just get caught up and and you know it's funny because i you know i know Somebody gonna get mad at me when I say this church folk back home, when they hear that song, they're gonna be like, I can't believe you're playing that song. And it's like, did you listen to what she had to say? She's talking about the same things that you preach about, the same things that you try to tell your kids about, encouraging your kids. She's just put it to a different type of beat. So and shout out to the people who listen for those who have ears will hear. Mm-hmm. Now tell me about that scripture. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've come to the end of the interview. Nika, it was a pleasure to get to talk to you face to face. This is a dream come true for me personally because it's a blessing whenever you could put a face to the voice. Remember, for everybody out there who doesn't know, the world is better when you exist within it because without yeah. you, the world is a dimmer place. Let me tell you why about you personally right now. Okay. No matter what life is or is not, It exists around you. 9.5 billion people in the world and less than 1% got to know you, experience you, Mm -hmm. get to love you, talk to you, breathe the same air as you, learn from you, or even fight with you. So Mm -hmm. less than 1% of the world was blessed by you. Mm-hmm. In the millions and billions of years, the trillions of years that they say the earth has been here, no one's had your fingerprint, your voice stamp, no one has sung like you, nobody's heart has beat to your rhythm. So the song that your life is, is a symphony unto itself, and only those in the seats can ever hear that melody. So mm-hmm. by the most high's blessings, I'm glad I got to meet you and glad we got to talk. And I pray we do this many, many, many more times. And Heritage Hip Hop is always here for you as far as songs, albums. Or if you just want to talk, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. So, And here we go with the last question. See, normally I ask a hip hop question at the end, but for you, I'm going to ask a a different question because you do R&B. I usually ask people, what is your legacy as you, you know, you know, as you would move on in life or, you know, 500 years from now, when people hear your voice, what is the legacy you left behind? For you, it's going to be a little different. And this is this is the question I have for you. Okay. R&B can be a lesson to the spirit. What is the most important thing you want to teach people through your voice and, and how and have them elevate through your music? Love each other and be grateful, be grateful for everything, that give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart. Every, every single time, every time I open my mouth, I want to hear, I want people to hear gratitude. Mm. Well, let's end it off like this, everybody. A, a, a wise gentleman told me, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. Mm. see people would think i mean phone your view mm-hmm. on your last day and all i'm going to say is this sometimes we need the music to show us how to see and to be seen and love and truth for yourself and each other is the way that we should look and see the world because at the end when we view our story how we remember and how we will be remembered is not by what we did to each other And with other people, it's going to be in the motions and the reflection of the good things that you made people feel off of what you did, besides you just being there to do something. Mm -hmm. With that being said, this is Karev, the Heritage Hip Hop, with my good friend, Nicola Dean. And we say peace, and we out.